Hello, everyone. My name is Esti Garrity, and I serve as the Chief Medical Officer at Esri. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to this workshop on spatiotemporal analysis of COVID-19 daily confirmed cases. I'm so excited about this session because you're really getting a dream team of teachers, leaders, presenters from Esri who can walk you through really powerful analytical and visualization tools and methods in a way that's super easy to understand. I'm actually convinced that nobody does it better than Dr. Lauren Scott Griffin, product specialist on the geoprocessing and analysis team, and Dr. Kevin Butler, product development engineer on the same team. I mean, you are really in for such a treat. So my job today is to introduce you to the topic and kind of get you in the mood for analysis and visualization. Our data set for today is COVID-19 daily confirmed cases. When I think about this data and why we're able to use it today, I can't help but start here with the world famous Johns Hopkins University dashboard. This single dashboard has been viewed trillions of times since the start of this pandemic, and it's actually the most viral map-based application in history. It was built by a graduate student, Ensheng Dong, under the guidance of Dr. Lauren Gardner at JHU. Now, the dashboard has been important because, first, it broadly demonstrated the value of GIS for health on a global scale. The dashboard is updated multiple times per day, and it really built expectations among all of us for real-time and near-real-time data, and at the same time, gives us opportunities to examine temporal trends. And perhaps most importantly is their data sharing ethic, because that made it easier for anyone in the world to visualize, analyze, plan, and make better decisions for their own local COVID-19 response. And people from all over the world did. Uh, I believe that it was from the JHU influence that other data sharing sites for COVID-19 cases and deaths also became available. Now, the data in today's workshop comes from USA Facts, and you can read the data collection methodology online if you wanna get the full details, but basically, they're collecting daily data from the county level cumulative totals of positive cases from state public health websites. Now in states that have dashboards, and many of them do, that can be done in a more automated way by scraping the data. Now for some places, it is still a manual process. Well, with all of the interest that we've seen in GIS for Health, we wanted to help our users take advantage of all of the opportunities where we saw that GIS could uh, make a difference. So we built a simple framework. And the approach really began with the idea of mapping the cases and the spatial and temporal spread of disease. Then we suggested mapping uh, vulnerable populations because we wanted to support varying population needs and keep equity really right at the forefront. Now, a key value proposition for GIS was also in mapping and forecasting infrastructure capacity, like hospital beds and COVID testing and vaccination sites. As the crisis continued, we extended the approach to include mapping overall disease trends, something you're gonna be focused on today. We also understood that community and business resilience were areas that could and probably should be thought of spatially. Like how do you hold elections or other special events in consideration of physical distancing needs? Or how do we return to our workplaces en masse? We also know that mapping our efforts and uh, goals can let us know if we're actually achieving them. So we want to understand the impacts and finally, we suggest that maps are an excellent way to communicate what's going on. And communicating with maps is the other area of focus for today's workshop. We think 
and hope that you agree that spatial analysis and visualization have never been more important that they, than they are at this time in our lives. The world has really changed forever, and we think that you are uniquely positioned to do spatial analysis and leverage the full force of GIS for life-saving efforts. We'll show you new tools in the ArcGIS arsenal to take your work to the next level. And these skills, of course, are uh, able to go well beyond COVID-19 uses. They'll support the work of health GIS across many programs and workflows. You know, there's always going to be another disaster or crisis or threat or a pandemic. And these skills are gonna make us better, faster and more prepared. And with that, I'll turn it over to Aileen to get the ball rolling.